how do I define assemblage art? I think assemblage art is just an incredibly unique process in creating art. My definition of assemblage art is uh, taking existing things, things that are already in existence and repurposing them and in some way utilizing the uniqueness that each of those items has and restructuring it, repurposing it, reformatting it into something that uh, that the artist envisions in their own head. Some friends of mine had seen some photos that I'd snapped and, and sent around and just said, hey, what do you think? And uh, one of my neighbors, Holly Warner, happened to stop by the day that some of the pieces were being shot. And um, as soon as she walked in the door and she just stood there pretty speechless, just looking at all of these illuminated glass sculptures all over the house and just really couldn't talk. And first, first thing she said to me was, oh my God, Jeff, she's like, these are so much nicer than what the picture showed. And, and uh, she's like, I can't believe what I'm seeing. She said, the world has to see these. And I remember the first word out of my mouth was, the world, the world has to see these. And she said, yeah, the world. She said, nobody would believe this if they saw it. And I said, well, I said, I'm, I'm really flattered and thanks, Holly, but uh, I said, I really got to focus here with, you know, the photographers and everything else. Um, why don't you go tell the world about it and give me a buzz later and I'll let you know how today went. She called me about three and a half hours later and uh, I picked up the phone and she said, boy, you better get busy. And here she had gone home and done all of this research, made dozens of phone calls, found like the quote unquote best galleries for, for my type of media in, uh, in the city of Austin. And uh, she just picked up the phone and said, I need to show you this guy's work. You won't believe it, I'm coming in next week. Didn't ask for an appointment, didn't anything, just walked in and uh, that was on a Sunday and she called me Monday and told me that uh, Artworks Gallery in downtown Austin wanted a certain number of pieces the next day. And uh, I thought, okay, well, here we go. So that's how it started. So within, you know, I think it was 10 short weeks, it was, they were everywhere. And, uh, and I really owe them being seen by the public to Holly. There's something really interesting and organic about working with pieces that have been in existence you know for a long period of time that are just sitting around collecting dust and you know it's it's almost uh, I don't know what the hell to say about it it's it's an interesting process of just repurposing they had a, the largest art festival in the upper Midwest that was uh, the Stone Arch Festival of the Arts. The deal was is that I said I would participate in it, but I didn't want to sit there because I can't sit still very long. And my friend Greg sat there and called me on Sunday night at the close and said, uh, hey, I, you need to come down, they're going to be judging, and, and I was too busy making more sculptures. And uh, a little while later he called me back to tell me that uh, the judges had come around and and I had won first place in my media and, um, and that they'd come around again and there was this big award there that was uh, Best New Artist Twin Cities. I remember at the time not skipping a beat and asking him, well, is there a cash prize? And, and uh, he said, no. It's, and I'm like, then why are you bothering me? I'm like, I need money right now. I'm trying to build this studio. I'm trying. <laughs> So I, at the time, even though I was 31, 32, I don't think I really had a grasp for uh, what was happening and how unusual and how rare it was. What changed for me from the 90s to now is the type of lighting that I'm using today was not available then. Because of the advancements in lighting today, I'm able to illuminate the entire sculpture from the base. Back in the 90s, you know, when you're dealing with highly collectible pieces of glass and pieces of glass that have been around for 60, 80, 100 years, you'd have to drill it and thread it and bolt it, taking a big risk in, in losing that piece of glass forever because a person can know what they're doing, but it's not an exact science and there's always the possibility that you're going to lose a piece. That wasn't a risk I was really willing to take too often back then because I, I really didn't feel like I had the right to, you know, be the person that uh, 
that took something that had been around for that length of time and, and put it out of commission. Today, because of the process that I developed with fusing, the choices are limitless. I mean, I, it's anything I see. But it's also representation and a collective of the past. So you're able to look at a finished piece and say, hey, that, that's just like the Murano ashtray that you know, my grandfather used to you know, use for his pipe, or you know, that punch bowl looks just like my great-grandmother's, or all that kind of stuff. And I think that that's kind of when the magic happens, is when they have that moment of clarity that, wow, that, really? That's, that, wow. And how it all comes together in, you know, a piece of glass that has its own personality, that has a great balance, a great energy. I look at it as, uh, as kind of a salvation for pieces that otherwise would have no other use.